Good morning. Happy New Year, bitch. <laughs> Welcome back. It's been a minute, but as they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I hope you all had a great holiday season and a great New Year's. Amazing. Okay. I wanted to kick this year off with a book haul. Just something like fun and different. <laughs> it's fun and different for me. I never do book hauls. On the theme of absence makes the heart grow fonder, after spending about a year and a half not being able to buy any physical books because first of all I was living in Italy, not only was it hard to find books like physical books in English, I couldn't really bring them all back with me so I kind of just didn't get any physical books as expected. Not being able to buy books in English for so long, naturally when I came back here, I'm in Melbourne now by the way, I think everyone's figured that out. <laughs> I've been here for a year. I just started buying. I was like, you know what? Add to cart, bitch. Anyway, so I wanted to share all the books that I've bought over the past year, which actually, when you look at this in the span of like, this is everything I bought in a year, it's actually not that much. It's a lot for me. I'm not really like a book haul queen. I'm actually kind of like a doesn't read queen, so it doesn't need to buy that many books queen. I guess we'll start with the ones that I actually did get overseas. <laughs> It's like books that I got overseas. <laughs> Basically just books that I got from my friends. Um, okay, so the first book that I got was from Jodi. Love her. Um, A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, I've never read a Hades and Persephone retelling before. Hades, the god of the dead, has built a gambling empire. That's kind of hot. Hot. Love it. Okay, then I got Sally Rooney's books. This one I got in Oxford. This one, this was a gift from Kat. Oh. Love her as well. This one she got for me at Piccadilly Waterstones. I love that both of these have come from really cool bookstores in England. And now they're on a crusty bookshelf in Melbourne. What a downgrade. Excited for them. Then I bought this one recently. So yeah, I'm excited to read them. I'm planning to read these in chronological order. So I'm going to read that one first. Then I'm going to read that. Then I'm going to read that. Because... Here's my strategy. Because people have said that this one was bad, and then this one was a little bit better, and then this one was the best one. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, if I start with this, it can only go up from there, you know? That's my strategy to avoid disappointment. Keep the expect- this is a rule to live by. Clearly, it's a rule I live by a lot. Um, keep everyone's expectations really, really low, so that you can only be surprised. This one, it's the complete Sherlock Holmes. This was a present from my ex-boyfriend. It's just fucking beautiful. I want to collect like multiples of these leather bound classics. Anyway, yeah, that's, love that one. Excited. Okay. And then I got this from my friend Tasman. Oh, love you Tasman. Look how cool. It's so old. Love me an old book. It's the Atlas of England and Wales. It's got these really cool mat. It's just sick. It's actually a sick little book. Look at that. I fucking love shit like that. You want to know how much I love old maps? Look at my calendar for this year. This is how you know I'm not just bullshitting. I'm not full of shit. My calendar for this year is antique maps of the world. Love that for me. I love calendars. So yeah, obsessed. Thank you so much, Tasman. Okay, they're all the books from my friends that I love. Mwah. Need to read them, obviously. Yeah. Oh, hang on, this was a gift as well. And this was a gift as well. Oh, this was a gift, this was a gift. Oh, look at, you know what? I haven't even bought like anything. These are all gifts. Then coming back to Australia, this was gifted to me by my grandma, Stasi Land by Anna Fonda. This is a book that everyone read in high school when I was there, except I wasn't, I didn't do that English. I did a different kind of English, so I never read it. Then my mom gave me this, <laughs> The Single Ladies of Jacaranda Retirement Village. It's never too late to grow old disgracefully. If that's not, a book that my mum would get me, then I don't know what it is. I don't know what this is about. I'm expecting it to be a ride though. My mum loved it, so. Presents from my friend Tracy. Things we never got over. I actually think this is like a popular book on TikTok right now. I'm not sure. I don't use TikTok. I have a TikTok, Lily C Reads. Um, I just don't really look at TikTok. Which, can you imagine if I got sucked into TikTok? You'd never see me ever again. Ever, ever again. No one in my real life would see me again either. It's a blessing that I don't know how to use that app. Like, I feel like a boomer, but I think it's probably a good thing. Anyway, I think this is one that's popular on there right now, I'm not sure. Bearded bad boy Barber Knox prefers to live his life the way he takes his coffee alone. Then I've got Isaac and the Egg. I see this in every bookstore that I walk into. I think it's just like one of the hot books at the moment. Isaac stands alone on a bridge and screams into the river below. Something screams back. I actually don't know what this is about either. A young man walks into the woods on the morning, on the worst morning of his life and finds something that will change everything. Cool. Everyone said it's beautiful. I'm guessing he finds an egg. Stunning. 
Demi Im's memoir, Dreamer, which to be honest, I'm not really a huge Demi fan. I've already read this clearly. I used to fuck with the song Super Love so, <laughs> so much, so much in high school. It was like a little bit not okay. I didn't even know that she was Australian. Didn't know that she won X Factor. Didn't know that she was the second Australian to be in Eurovision and was a Eurovision finalist. Reading a memoir about someone that you don't actually really know anything about is interesting. So it just like details her life, obviously it's a memoir. Um, holy shit, her label, what a fucking shitty label to be signed to. Sony did her so dirty, I actually feel so bad for her. She talks about how her label just like didn't support her at all and like some of the shit that they did, it was just like, are you kidding me? What is the point of signing someone to your label if you don't actually care about their career, basically? She also got me this. Um, Our Missing Hearts. This author wrote Little Fires Everywhere, which is also a book I want to read. It's about a 12 year old bird gardener. Cute. Oh! The kid's name is Bird Gardener. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, Bird Gardener, like what kind of job is that? Bird is the first name, Gardener is the last name. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, I'm gonna read you the tagline at the bottom and not the synopsis, okay? Our Missing Hearts is an old story made new of the ways supposedly civilized communities can turn a blind eye to the most searing injustice. It's a story about the power and limitations of art to create change in the world, the lessons and legacies we pass on to our children, and how any of us can survive a broken world with our hearts intact. I think this is gonna make me sad. Is it better to read sad books when you're already sad or would that just like tip you over the edge? Or read them when you're happy so they don't make you as sad, but then you're ruining your happy mood. Then three books that I got from publishers actually. Got this one from Macmillan. Thank you, Macmillan. Phoebe Davis has opinions. Most of all, that love is for losers. But then she meets Emma and now she doesn't know what to think. I think this is a sapphic book, I think. Well, that's what I'm gathering from what it says on the back. Why is the cat like, why is the cat like that why is it like that on the cover what i'm gathering from this is like girl that just is like really jaded and like doesn't believe in love and then she meets another girl that like makes her believe in love like oh then i also got if i can't have you by charlotte levin uh this is also from Macmillan, thank you. So what I'm gathering from this, I think it's either about someone who loved someone and then they they left them and then now they're like, if I can't have you, no one can, or which, and then it turns into like a thriller, <laughs> or it's gonna be about someone that like stalks them or like desperately tries to win them back. I think it's something like that, which fuck me up. Like that's exactly what I love. I love books with a fucked up main character that's just like so not right in the head. I actually can't wait to read this. I think I'm gonna read it this month in January. Next that I got from, oh, Macmillan. So thank you. Electric Mad and Brave by Tom Pitts. So this is about a guy who's in a mental health facility recovering after a breakdown. So I think it's kind of like, he starts writing a book about his adolescence to kind of help him work through some of like the emotions and stuff that have come up. And he talks about this girl that he loved. So it's just kind of like him delving into his past and all the stuff that that brings up for him. That one, the last book that was a gift from my mom again. This one is Where the Crawdad Sin. She just gave this to me. This is a famous book. I think everyone knows what this is about. It's about the Marsh Girl. I don't know why I can't not say Marsh Girl like that. Because, okay, I watched the trailer and it was like, the Marsh Girl. And now I just say it like that every time. For years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barkley Cove, a quiet town in North Carolina coast in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead. And then they suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kaya, Kaya is not what they say. Okay, so I think it's like the Marsh Girl gets pinned for a murder that she might not have committed. And then she lives in a marsh. Everyone said it's amazing, so. Anyway, excited to read that. Don't really know much about it, to be honest. I just know that it's been seen everywhere. It's turned into a movie now. Everyone seems to love it, I guess. Can't wait to read that. Next book that I found on the street, not even kidding, Mao's Last Dancer. I think everyone knows about this book. It's super famous. It's like one of those books that's been famous for years, years and years. And it's about this boy who was born in poverty in China. I think this is like kind of a nonfiction. Okay, then I have... 
Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I've already read this one actually, but I read it on my Kindle and I wanted to have a physical version of it. Um, and I also want to reread it before I read this because I want to like go through and mark it up and tab things and stuff. Um, and then I obviously have the sequel. I need to read this one, still haven't read it. This book. Spanish Love Deception. Everyone loves this. This is another book that's really popular on TikTok as well, I think. And also is popular on YouTube and everything. Everyone's in love with the guy in this book, so... We'll see. We'll see. I really don't buy into much hype anymore. Anytime someone's hyped up a romance book to me, I've hated it. So I really hope that that's not going to be the case for this. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I've wanted to read this for fucking years and years and years. Like since I started watching BookTube back in the prehistoric era. This is about someone who is blind and I think she falls in love with a Nazi or something like that. Then I have Cersei. Oh, I've also got The Song of Achilles. But I also have Cersei. Cersei. Really excited to read that one too. Then I have Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This one, to be honest, I don't think anyone in the book community on here, online, has talked about this, to be honest. But it's a book that I see every fucking time I go into a bookstore for the past, like, five years. This book has been on, like, the front display. I'm like, is anyone actually reading it and loving it? And, like, what, what's the deal? What's the deal with this book? I just wanted to find out. It's about a girl who lives a boring life. She just has a very, like, timetabled, does everything exactly the same, and she's apparently happy with it. Don't know where that's gonna go. Hopefully something fucked happens, and it's like, oh yeah, everyone thinks she's this boring lady, but she's actually, like, a serial killer. I just want to know what, what this book's deal is. Then I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Everybody loves this book, and I'm sick of not knowing. I'm sick of not having read it. Reclusive Hollywood movie icon Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. Love it. And then one that I bought last week is My Dark Vanessa. So I think it's about a girl called Vanessa and when she was younger, she like slept with her English teacher. And I think like she thought she was in love with him and then now, years later, it's like someone's press charges against him, I think. Uh, I think now they're reaching out to her for a comment or something. And she's, but she's kind of off the mindset of like, no, like what happened with us was different. Like we were in love, which is disturbing. So, cause it says here, it's like, no one seems to understand that, that what Vanessa and Mr. Strain had together wasn't abuse, it was love. I think this is going to be really dark and disturbing. That is everything. That's everything that I got in the past year. It's actually not that much. I'm surprised that I didn't... Oh, remember when I was like, hey, I'm going to try to read my entire TBR by the end of the year. Lol. And also, when did I give myself the deadline? May? May or something like that. Um, which honestly, that is super funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen. My New Year's resolution for 2023, honestly guys, is to stop being fucking delusional. Because for too long on this channel, I have walked about literally believing the most ridiculous shit. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna post every week. Okay, girl. So yeah, this, this is most of them and there's a couple over there. These are all the books that I got in the past year. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See you later. <laughs>